Chairman, Ranking Member Barton, and distinguished members of the committee, thank you for inviting me here and for bringing attention to the ethical issues of this field. I'm Greg Kavnick. I'm a research scholar at the Hazing Center, nonpartisan, nonprofit, non uh, independent research institute that studies ethical issues in medicine, medicine and the biological sciences, editor of one of our journals, the Hastings Center Report. We're now in a two-year project funded by the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation to investigate the ethical issues of synthetic biology. What I wanted to do this morning is just set synthetic biology within a widely used framework for thinking about the ethics of biotechnologies and then comment very briefly on its governance. The ethical issues fall into two broad categories. First are intrinsic concerns, as they're called, which are about whether the science is good or bad in and of itself, aside from consequences. Many people have an intrinsic objection to cloning human beings, for example. They just feel it's wrong to do full stop. The second category involves concerns about potential consequences, risks and benefits, for example. The classic intrinsic concerns about synthetic biology are that scientists are playing God, as people often say, or that life is something more than just a soup of interacting chemicals that we can see in a microscope, maybe something sacred, and scientists are overstepping their bounds in creating it. You might worry also that synthetic biology will undermine the moral value of life, even if you don't believe that life is something more than interacting chemicals. I think beliefs about the specialness of life or the sacredness of life, for those who put it that way, are not undercut by this science. We're just talking about microbes at this point. Uh, more importantly, whatever value we do attach to microbial life, we can also find in the life of a synthesized microbe as well. Yet another possible intrinsic objection to synthetic biology is environmentalist. We might think it's an intrinsically undesirable intrusion into nature. Of course, even environmentalists accept that forests may sometimes be logged, so there's a question of balance here, a question of where to draw the line. If synthetic biology turned out to be beneficial to the environment, many environmentalists, myself included, would find it attractive. Intrinsic moral concerns are important and can be important for policy, but in the case of synthetic biology as it now stands, I do not think they point the way toward regulation. I think the field should be judged and governed on the basis of the second category of moral concerns, the consequences. The field holds significant promise of benefit. There are also, however, morally serious risks. First, there are concerns about justice. Some worry that synthetic biology could be such a powerful way of making and distributing goods that if we aren't careful about how it's used, who benefits from it, who owns it, there could be long-term social and environmental harms. Two other kinds of concern are about possible physical dangers. There are concerns about accidents, organisms escaping and running amok, and about deliberate misuse. I once heard a microbiologist say that he was very enthusiastic about synthetic biology, and the only thing that worries him is the possibility of catastrophe. Synthetic biology aims at simplicity and control. One of the themes of traditional biology, though, is that living things usually turn out to be more complex than we thought. I believe we should guard against an overconfidence that we understand the risks of this field. We shouldn't assume that synthetic organisms will shed the unpredictability inherent to life. Life tends to find a way, and so might artificial life. I would not at all call for a general moratorium on the work. I would offer some broad recommendations for how to proceed. We need, I think, first, more study of the emergence, plausibility, and impact of potential risks. Second, a strategy for studying risks that brings together different disciplines and perspectives. Third, a strategy that's grounded in good science, not sheer speculation, but is flexible enough to look for the unexpected. And fourth, an analysis of whether our current regulatory framework is adequate. And we should also continue the conversation about ethics. Thank you for this opportunity to share my thoughts. Thank you very much, Dr. Kevnick.